When I gave the psalm to the secretary this week, I told her Psalm 103, but this morning, as I was going through the lesson in the final outline, I thought, you know, Psalm 107 will fit better. So we're going to go to Psalm 107, and we'll read the first 31 verses. I'll read uh, the first and the odd-numbered, and we ask you to join together as you read the even-numbered verses, Psalm 107. Let's stand as we read the Word of God. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And has gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. And he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. And then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he saved them out of their distresses. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Fools, because of their transgression, and because of their iniquities are afflicted. And then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. He word and and oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. They that go down to the sea in ships, that do business in great waters. For he commandeth and raiseth the stormy wind, and lifteth up the waves thereof. And they reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man, and are at wit's end. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Shall we pray? Lord, we've gathered here to praise you for your goodness and your wonderful works to the children of men. We want to offer to you the sacrifice of praise and of thanksgiving, to just lift our voices together as a chorus of praise, Lord, unto you. We ask that you would now open our hearts and give us understanding of your word in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Well, we finished the book of Hebrews this week, chapter 13. Tonight, we'll be studying the 13th chapter, and then ne next week, we move into the book of James. 
This morning, we'd like to draw your attention to verses 15 and 16 of the 13th chapter of Hebrews. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. The book of Hebrews was written, as it indicates, to the Hebrews, to Jews, who had come to the saving knowledge and faith in Jesus Christ. However, in the offering of sacrifices, there is something that is very fulfilling. To think that I have done something for God that he is pleased with is a very rich experience. Whenever we give to God, it leaves us with such a feeling of joy and fulfillment, like I am now fulfilling the purpose for which I was created. And thus, in the Old Testament, when they would bring their sacrifices to God, there was something very fulfilling in that. It was traditional. It was just ingrained in their very being. Having come now to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and realizing that he is the complete sacrifice, that there is no longer a necessity of bringing an animal to sacrifice to the Lord, but that he is the complete sacrifice. The people, the Jewish people especially, who had traditionally been offering sacrifices, felt like that there was something sort of missing. They missed that fulfillment that comes with giving something to God. And so the writer is saying to them, because some of them were even going so far as to going back and taking sacrifices to the temple to offer to the Lord. And so he was saying that there is a sacrifice that is acceptable to God, and that is the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. And so he encourages them to offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of our lips unto the Lord. Sacrifice is giving something of value to you to someone else. I may sacrifice of my time to come over and give you a hand in a project. I may sacrifice the seat that I am occupying uh, so that someone else might be able to sit down. And it's interesting, isn't it, whenever we give a sacrifice, there is a, there is a sense of goodness and fulfillment. In a biblical sense, the thought of giving an offering to God as a sacrifice uh, was something that we find throughout the scriptures. In fact, there were many laws that were given concerning the sacrifices that were to be offered to God. The different sacrifices that were to be made for different things. There was the sin offering. When I had sinned against the Lord, conscious of my sin, I would bring an animal and there I would confess my sins and head, on the head of the animal it would be slain and offered as a sacrifice unto God and my sins would be covered. If I felt I just want to consecrate my life to the Lord completely, I just want to give God my life, I would bring a burnt offering sacrifice. That is an animal and it was to be burnt completely 
And it was in a sense saying, Lord, I want my life to just be burned out for you. I want to just give myself completely and fully to you. Then there was the peace offering. And this again was of a lamb as a general rule. And the fat of it would be taken and placed on the fire. And that was called the sweet smelling savor unto the Lord. What smells better than barbecue? And the, the fat, of course, in the animal is what gives the good smell because of the drippings coming down on the coals and that smoke and all. And thus the sweet-smelling savor. It was saying, here, Lord, the sweet-smelling savor to you. But the lamb was then roasted, and I would sit down with my family, and we would eat together the roasted lamb as a peace offering or an offering in which I entered into fellowship with God. Of course, this would follow the sin offering. That went completely to the Lord. But the peace offering was uh, the fellow, living in fellowship with God and the idea of God having partaken of part of it and the family and I eating of it and thus we're sort of eating together with God and fellowshipping with God. And they were very moving, very touching, and, and very meaningful, and deeply ingrained in the traditions of the people. The, the sacrifices could be of an animal, an ox, a goat, a lamb, or if you were poor, you could bring turtle doves as an offering to the Lord. But then they also had the meal offerings. And these, again, were called the sweet-smelling savor. They would take the fine flour, mix it with oil, and they would bake it. And again, one of the favorite aromas are, is that of fresh bread baking. And uh, this was a sacrifice offering to the Lord, and it was to be eaten only by the priest. Uh, and it was because it had been given to God, it was to be eaten only by the priest. Now, there are things that God considered more important than sacrifices. When King Saul was reigning and the kingdom had been established, the prophet Samuel came to Saul and he said, when the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt, they were attacked by the Amalekites. And so God declared that when you came into the land and were established there, that you had unfinished business. You were to go back and you were to utterly destroy the Amalekites because of their attack against the people of God. Don't leave anything alive. Kill all of the animals, everything. Don't leave anything alive. And so Saul, by the commandment of the Lord, went down against the Amalekites, and God delivered them into his hand. However, there were some of the sheep and the cattle that were very good stock. And so Saul decided to bring those back, but the cattle and the sheep that looked sickly or were thin and all, he hacked to pieces. As he was returning from the war, bringing back spoils, the prophet Samuel came out to meet him, and Saul said, As the Lord liveth, I've done everything God told me to do. And Samuel said, As the Lord liveth, if you did everything God told you to do, how come I hear the sheep and I hear the cattle? And Saul said, well, they were so good, I thought I would bring them back and offer them as a sacrifice unto God. It was then that the prophet Samuel said, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. And to hearken is better than the fat of rams. 
God would prefer your obedience to your sacrifices, Saul is told. Through the prophet Hosea, God said, For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Solomon said, To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. David said to God, For you desire not sacrifice, else would I give it. You do not delight in the burnt offering, but the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, and a broken and a contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. There came a time in the history of the nation of Israel when the people's hearts were so turned from God that there was really no true fellowship with God. They had given themselves over to their sinful ways. And yet, because sacrifice is so deeply ingrained in the traditional fiber of a man, the people were still bringing their sacrifices. They were still going through the rituals of worship, though not with the heart, but just it was an outward kind of a traditional ritual now. And so God said to them, when you come to appear before me, who has required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, away with it. It's iniquity, even your solemn meetings. Your new moons and your appointed feast my soul hates. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary of them. God said he just didn't want them anymore. Amos, the prophet, chapter 5, God spoke to Amos and he said, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell the sacrifices in your solemn assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your meal offerings, I will not accept them neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy vials. But let judgment run down as waters and righteousness as a mighty stream. Jesus said to love him with all of your heart, with all your understanding, with all your soul, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more than all of the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices, more important to God, to love him with all your heart, understanding, soul, and strength. So there were those things that God considered more important than the sacrifices that they were giving obedience, that you might have mercy, that you would do justice and right judgment, that you would have a broken spirit and a contrite heart, and that you would love God with all your heart and understanding and soul and strength and your neighbor as yourself. Those things were more important to God than the sacrifices. Now, there were in the Old Testament not just the animal sacrifices, but there is reference to the sacrifice of praise unto God in the Old Testament. It isn't just a New Testament concept. David wrote in Psalm 27, 
And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Psalm 69, 30, I will praise the name of God with a song, and I will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or a bullock that hath horns and hoofs. In Psalm 107, 22, which we read, let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Psalm 116, 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. God said, Whoso offereth praise glorifies me, and to him that orders his conversation aright, I will show the salvation of God. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God said, Thus saith the Lord, Again there shall be heard in this place. Now this is when Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Babylonians, the people taken away, and there's an ominous quiet over the city. People are gone. Thus saith the Lord, Again there will be heard in this place, which you sh say shall be desolate, without man and without beast, even the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate, they are without man and without inhabitant and without beast. There will be the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endureth forever, and of them that shall bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. So the idea of the sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord. For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. And so we are encouraged to offer to God the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. I think that this means that there are times when we don't feel like praising God. And that is when praise becomes a sacrifice. Much of our praise is just spontaneous response to God's goodness. I find myself just breaking out in spontaneous praise all the time. Yesterday, about three different occasions as I was driving along, and just thinking about God's goodness and God's blessing, I just praise the Lord, shouted out praise there in my car. Just thanking God for his goodness. When I think of all that God has done, when I think of the blessings, I think of you, and I think of this work that God has done, I just get overwhelmed and my heart just burst forth in praise. I think of my beautiful, lovely wife. I think of my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandson. It just overwhelms me. I just say, Lord, you're so good. I love you, Lord. And that's just spontaneous. That's not really so much a sacrifice. It's just something spontaneous from my heart. Now, there are things that come along that are not so pleasant. You get involved in some stupid, frivolous suit. Some pastor up in Washington gave advice to a lady that she felt was not good. Now, I really didn't know this pastor at all, but because his church was named Calvary Chapel, she sued him and included me. And I had to go and spend a day in depositions. Now, I really didn't feel like praising the Lord in those circumstances. And so praising the Lord was a sacrifice of praise. But you know, the scripture tells us, in all things give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus 
concerning you. Now, it doesn't say for all things give thanks. You know, for some things I really don't give thanks, but I give thanks in all things. No matter what I'm going through, I realize that God orders my life. God's in control. He has a purpose. He has a plan. And all things are working together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And so in everything, give thanks. And sometimes it is a sacrifice of praise. It's an exercise of faith. Surely the scriptures call on us over and over again to praise the Lord. This giving to God, the sacrifice or the offering of praise. Psalm 100 verse 4, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Psalm 136, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalm 117, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And then Psalm 135, praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Psalm 147, praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God. It is pleasant, and praise is beautiful. And then the very last psalm, the end of the psalms, the last one, the last verse, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So the sacrifice of praise. I can give God a sacrifice. The sacrifice of praise unto the Lord, which is well-pleasing unto him. But then there are other sacrifices here in verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, that is, uh, to uh, give to those who are in need. Forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. God is well pleased when I consider the poor and reach out to help the poor. Uh, actually, though, God is very interested in the poor. Under the law, in Deuteronomy 15, 7, God commanded, if there be among you a poor man or one of your brothers within any of your gates in the land which the Lord your God gives to you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother. When Job was going through all of his trials, all of the sufferings, and his friends came to comfort him, they suggested that perhaps Job's problems stem from the fact that he disregarded the needs of the poor. Job was a very wealthy man, and his friends were suggesting, well, Job, maybe you've got all of these problems because you haven't considered the poor. You haven't reached out to help them. And so Job, speaking in his own defense to his friend, said, I was a father to the poor, and the cause which I knew not I searched out. Did not I weep for him that was in trouble? And was my, not my soul grieved for the poor? There are many, many Proverbs that you, as you go through the book of Proverbs that talks about the poor and considering the poor. A couple of them, Proverbs 19, 17, he that has pity on the poor lends unto the Lord, and that which he has given, the Lord will pay him again. 
Proverbs 28, 27. And he that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Lord, help me live from day to day in such a self-forgetting way that even when I kneel to pray, my prayer will be for others. Help me in all the things I do to ever be sincerely true and know that all I do for you must needs be done for others. Others, Lord, yes, others, let this my motto be. Help me to live for others that I might live for thee. And Jesus said, Inasmuch as you have done it unto the least of these, my brothers, you have done it unto me. God is well pleased with the sacrifices that we make. And you see, sometimes it can be a sacrifice. I take something of mine and give it to a person who is in need. That's a sacrifice, but it's well-pleasing unto God, and so we're encouraged to distribute help to those that are in need, because that is the sacrifice with which God is well-pleased. After the service, the first service this morning, a man came to me at the door to share with me that as he was sitting here in the service, a lady came in and sat beside him, did not have a Bible. And so during the responsive reading, he asked if she would like to share, which she did. And then after the service, he said, because she looked like she was in need, he said, I said to her, would you like to have my Bible? And he said, Tears filled her eyes, and she was just overwhelmed. She didn't have a Bible, and so she took his Bible. He was heading over to the bookstore to get another one, but that's the sacrifice that the Lord is well pleased with. The, when you see someone in need, and I don't mean these guys that are standing there will work you know, for food. Uh, that's a racket. But uh, those truly in need, uh, when we reach out to them, when we take from ourselves to help them, those are the things that God is pleased with. That's the sacrifice that God will accept and God is pleased with. So we offer to him the sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips. And we offer him the sacrifice by giving to those in need and God accepts and is well pleased. Why don't we offer to God the sacrifice of praise just now, the fruit of our lips unto him? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Shall we stand? May the Lord bless you this week as you walk in fellowship with him and as you offer to him the sacrifices of praise and of reaching out to the needy, sacrifices with which the Lord is well pleased, sacrifices that the Lord will accept. And may you know the joy, the fulfillment that, that wonderful feeling. And this fellow was just bubbling over this morning. I, I mean, he was just overwhelmed with just the joy that he received because Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. 
And in giving, he receives such joy and, and such fulfillment. And may you experience that joy and fulfillment as we reach out to help those that are in need. God bless you, and may it be just a wonderful week of fellowship with him. The Lord bless thee, the Lord bless thee and, keep thee. and keep thee. The Lord make 